Hey there, it's Jerry from the Military Collectible Shop. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the art of war. Now, not the book by Sun Tzu, but which is actually a really good book. If you get a chance to read it, check it out from the library. Uh, or if you take any college business courses, you're probably going to have to read it. Um, but a very good book with a lot of principles that still hold true. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the posters and artwork uh, that was produced during wartime, you know, for propaganda and patriotic services. Posters are a great way to add visual interest and color and a little bit of historical context to a collection or a display. So they're, they're great for collectors. There's such a wide variety in every size, format, conflict. Um, you know, you, you can usually find one um, that will fit your needs. There are a lot of reproductions out there though, um, and even more so nowadays than ever before. So it's, you have to be careful when buying, when buying wartime posters. This is kind of a famous one from World War I. Uh, you know, fight or buy bonds, the third liberty loan. So it was encouraging people either to join up and fight the cause or at least help fund the cause and buy, buy war bonds. Um, this was done by, uh, by Christie, who is a very famous artist of the, of the day. Um, you actually see a lot of his work. This one does have a little bit of damage to the upper right hand corner, but it was framed in such a way where it's not readily apparent. But that's a great World War I piece, you know, that would look awesome at home in any World War I collection. Now this one uh, is another very iconic poster of the Sullivan brothers uh, who were all killed uh, when the USS Juno was sunk. So, you know, they, they did their part, you know, kind of extolling people to do something for the war. You know, look what this family has gone through. You need to do something. So, and what's interesting about this one, um, and one of the things I wanted to share with you, is that a lot of the wartime posters, when they were actually delivered to the places, and these were hung up in, in factories, um, in city halls, in post offices, in public areas, uh, you know, on sides of buildings, and anywhere they could. You know, in the, in the pre-internet world, you know, pre-television, there wasn't a lot of ways to get your message out. The newspaper, um, but posters were a very big part of, of kind of that mass media of the day. So but one of the things that we like to see as, as poster collectors is the fold lines that run across the posters. Because a lot of these posters, uh, most of the war bond and, and, and those type, were actually folded up and sent out by the, the war printing offices. So they're, they're going to have fold lines. Um, and the interesting thing is some of the reproductions that we've seen, they'll actually, one, they'll either not have fold lines, so you know it's kind of a computerized printout, or they'll actually even print, because they've taken a scan of the original, they'll print the fold lines. So it'll actually look like a fold crease, but if you run your finger across it, it's gonna be perfectly smooth. So that's, you know, the fold lines are actually, they're not a detractor, they actually help define um, originality. Uh, this is a piece that, that I need to research a little more because I, I believe this one might be a reproduction. Um, this one was for venereal disease. Um, basically, it's, it was stopping the soldier from going you know, off to war because he had to stay back in the hospital because you know, he had the clap um, or whatever. So, uh, so um, but what, what I'm worried about in this one, no fold lines. I'm not familiar with the little corner printing markings um, and the little dots look a little computerized printing to me, the, the ink dots. So I need, to, I need to get a loop and look at that one. And also look at the paper. Um, sometimes later paper will actually phosphoresce under fluorescent black light, ultraviolet light. So we like to uh, run the paper through the, the UV test as well. Uh, this was a nice set. This is part of the, the four freedoms. 
by Norman Rockwell. Freedom of speech. Uh, freedom of religion. Um, free to choose white meat or dark meat at Thanksgiving. And um, free to, I don't know, house and home, something, something, whatever. I should probably do my research before I turn the camera on. Um, but what fun would that be? We also got in a, uh, uh, you know, Our Carelessness, Their Secret Weapon, kind of an anti-axis, uh, very racist, but anti-axis uh, poster um, from the Forest Service. You know, basically don't start forest fires because, you know, it hurts the country. There's another one. Uh, this is kind of fun. The Schools at War. So here we have some kids buying war bonds, doing the scrap drive thing, um, you know. So everybody was involved uh, during World War II, you know, in, at some level. So again, these, these posters, while they're a great collection by themselves, they also really augment any collection or display, um, you know, that, that you might be doing. Here's kind of a famous one. Now this was actually, um, the interesting thing about this one is the original poster came out in World War I um, by, uh, by Flagg, Montgomery Flagg, um, and uh, was widely copied. This one, this poster actually came out in 1975, but it's not really a reproduction. It, I mean, it technically, I suppose it is a reproduction of the World War I one, but these were actually used again during the Vietnam War era to recruit again. So it's kind of an example of, of an iconic design of Uncle Sam, um, you know, I want you for the U.S. Army. And, um, you know, so that what's old is new again, you know, preaching to a new audience. Uh, and then one of my personal favorites, um, 1778 to 1943, Americans will always fight for freedom. So it shows, you know, the, the, the Americans of the day, you know, during World War II marching off to war as the spirit of the early American colonials look on. Um, so, and again, we see, we see the fold lines in the poster. Um, you know, this is a very, a very popular, very dramatic, uh, very dramatic one. Um, but again, one of, one of my favorites. I love the, love the flag on the guy's sleeve. One of the things I like to collect from my own personal collections is original wartime art. Now, this kind of thing doesn't come up often. So when it does, I consider myself very lucky to be able to be the caretaker of these pieces. This is actually a World War II, obviously, anti-axis type of piece where it's all hand-painted on what is actually like a masonite uh, or hardwood board. Uh, now what I've been trying to research, uh, because this is a signed piece, I've been trying to research the artist, and I've also been trying to research if this was actually actually turned into a poster at any time uh, that was actually actually used. Because a lot of the original artworks is what the, the wartime posters uh, came from. This one is a little more contemporary and a little larger, um, but still actually I, I thought it was really unique. Now this one was probably done, um, you know, somewhat more recently, obviously because of the scale and everything. Th this kind of image was probably actually used on a model airplane box. So I need to do some research on the, uh, on the artist and see if I can find um, that this piece was actually used anywhere. Um, I also collect several of the wartime uh, print, or not prints, but actual original artwork by Harry Jaffe. Now, those of you old enough to remember Mad Magazine will remember the artwork of both Al and Harry Jaffe, who were both prolific artists in the 60s and 70s working for Mad Magazine. Um, prior to that, when Harry was a young boy, he was actually interested in airplanes and did a lot of uh, wartime 
artwork of airplanes during World War II. So, and they started off selling these. They started doing these by hands. Him and a group of friends would actually sit around and paint these, and then they would actually sell them to galleries and other department stores and things like that and, and sell them. Uh, so a lot of the early ones he did were actually original Jaffe's. At some point, they realized that the market uh, far outstripped the supply, so he worked with the gallery and they actually made prints. So a lot of the prints you see of the, the Jaffe planes are actually reproduction prints made from his original drawings. I'm fortunate enough to be able to have a couple of his original paintings uh, in, in my own collection. So that's another kind of aspect of the art of war that you don't often find, but it's very exciting when you do. That was a little talk about posters. I hope you liked it. If you have any specific questions, we are always happy to help. Email us, drop us a line, give us a call. Uh, generally, email works best. Uh, a lot of you have been calling during shop hours, and quite honestly, we're kind of busy when the shop is open. So we do have limited hours because Mark and I both work full-time gigs in addition to running the shop. So. Email generally works best for questions. Um, you are welcome to give us a call. You know, if you, if you do need to talk about something, I don't want to scare you completely off. But uh, it's it's not a time we, we actually have a lot of time to chat. So, um, at any rate, I'm Jerry. This is the Military Collectible Shop. Thanks for watching. Remember to like us, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.